This time on the show, USB Multipass and Grub Foo, manage your virtual machine with Kodiak, ultimate Kindle hacks, and the Technoless battering ram. All that and more on this episode of Hack 5. This episode of Hack 5 is brought to you by GoDaddy, Squarespace, and the National Fight Against Drunk Driving. Over the limit, under arrest. Konbanwa! O genki desu ka? Welcome to Hack 5. My name is Shannon Morse. I'm Darren Kitchen. And I'm Matt Lestock. And that was Japanese, in case you didn't know. So that's what it was. <laughs> she does well, that sometimes. You, you, told me, you told me to do it differently. Okay, that's what we we're going to try to do. <laughs> Every time, differently? I don't know. I oh. can't write that much. I'm not that creative. <laughs> So, right. second, se sec or six second season, se sixth season, sixth fourth, season, second. second episode. Uh -huh. We lit it a little bit brighter this time. Oh, we actually didn't like. Everybody's like, put more lights up, and I'm like, no, I really like the Why depth, was the it shadows dark? that we're getting. It's the because shadows. Oh, what okay. happens is it looks beautiful for us when I'm looking at the preview monitor, and then what happens is it gets into you know into editing, uh, it gets encoded, encoding. and then we send the encoded file to Revision Three, yeah. and then they encode it out to all the you know the when you download your XVID, your WMVs, your your M4As, all, or M4Vs, all of those, you know, it's, it's just crunching it down more and more every single time we're starting to lose yeah. fidelity. Yes. So, you know, we just... So it's no longer high definition? Well, no, it's still HD. Oh, okay. It's just, you know, what happens is the blacks get blacker every, every time you encode. I know. Yeah. So it's crunching down mm -hmm. those colors. Yeah. Um, so, you know, just what we so should do is... So we've compensated. Yes, we've compensated in camera, not in light, because if we just, like, flood the lights, we're going to look flat, and that's not going to be cool. No, that would be no fun. Or you know what mm -hmm. we could do? Just release every single episode in like Blu-ray, uh, like master them, and then like you know we'll, we'll mail them to everyone. You have a difficult mail time them to everyone. Keeping track of episodes. If only Speaking we had of which, are you running out of space yet? Centers. Are you <laughs> Actually, running? We've got another terabyte hard drive for the sixth season. Oh. We're, we're averaging a terabyte per season. My grandma asked me to burn her a CD of all the pictures from our vacation. We put them all on the web. It yeah. was all four gigs. I know. And then she emailed me and said, can you put all those pictures on a DVD? She can't download four gigs? Tell her to get down them all. It makes it really easy to download. Apparently, Grandma's got 56 gigs. Like, oh, oh, nah, nah. You went there. Yeah, I did. <laughs> That's, that was so original, I must say. Are you an HPB? Not anymore. <laughs> I was. So what's going on with you? Uh, I am... Wearing a green, green shirt. <laughs> That's what's better than your purple one. See <laughs> if you can figure out what's different and what's the same. It's all being <laughs> done in post because I'm that good with After Effects. Um, he doesn't uh, buy what's the same on? shirt in three I'm, different colors. I'm buying camping gear to go on a motor motorcycle trek here to the mountains. Ooh. I don't think that's what she meant. Oh, she meant on the show. Yeah. Oh, I'm like, is that what's on? What's going on in my life? That's pretty much it. Uh, but no, we're talking about Grub. We're uh, following up with the multipass. I've got some cool stuff that's only in French. It's going to be Very fun. cool. OK. Touche. Mm -hmm. um, I, I got a bunch of questions asking uh, about you know, the VMware tools that we use to, to manage the systems. Uh, it's on Windows only. Mm -hmm. So people are like, well, how do I, you know, on my Mac or on my you know, Linux PC or whatever? Yeah. Well, there's a tool that's being created right now. <laughs> well, so you're Kirby. saying that our viewers aren't, aren't Windows centric? It's amazing. I have accepted the fact that we have a diverse audience. You're, are okay? you embracing the open source and, no. and the cross platformness? No. I'm um, cross platform, doing, yes. Uh -huh. You're going to start doing us some Java segments? It's going to be awesome. Yeah. And monkeys might fly out of my butt. So, anyways, we're being stupid. It's so an, let's get It's an air right. app. Yeah. Oh, sounds good. I love air. There we go. I love air. I love life. <laughs> I love Hack <laughs> 5. I love beer. Let's take a break and find out what's going on in Land Party. All right, guys, it's Land Party time. This time, we're going to be playing Call of Duty Modern Warfare for the PC, not the 360. We're going to be playing on Saturday, September 5th. Anytime, join up. COD.hack5.org is where you need to be. But before you do that, head on over to hack5land.squarespace.com where you can vote for new games, check out the leaderboards for games past, and you know, just chat with the general fan base who loves playing games. Hack5land.squarespace.com. 
With Squarespace, you can build beautiful looking blogs or websites in a fraction of the time it would take with a traditional content management system. Their intuitive drag and drop interface is as snappy and powerful as a desktop publishing app. But best of all, there's no software to install, no databases to configure, no patches to apply, and no code to fiddle with. Find out for yourself how simple and powerful it can be with a two-week free trial at squarespace.com. And use promo code HACK5 to support the show and save 10% off the life of your service at squarespace.com. If you've been following along since episode 525, you'll notice that we've been that um, stuff has been happening, and I, that's cool. So. On episode 525, I started a segment about what I called the USB multipass, and it's basically taking a whole bunch of different like ISOs and disk images and stuff from all those different programs that you love to boot off of. And instead of having just a gigantic geek keychain of USB drives, compress them all into one using some grub. Uh, what I'd like to do is talk about the next evolution of that, the better, faster, stronger grub, and that is grub2, as well as some other programs and some tweaks for legacy grub to make uh, the USB multipass awesome. And I've got to give mad shout out and thanks to all of you guys that have just been pouring onto the forums um, about this project. It's so cool that it's kind of evolved into a community project now. So I'm stoked about that. Um, and it will be getting a, or should now have a much prettier home so we can have multiple threads and all that fun stuff. That said, let's talk about Grub2. Grub2 is a complete rewrite of Grub. It is, it's uh, made for portability, it's modular, it's a, it's a clean rewrite of the code, and it is not, com uh, and, and the neatest thing about it is that it has this option called loopback. And this loopback option basically allows you to take a file, for instance, an ISO file, and actually mount that file as a device, as a, like a drive or something, which is really neat. Um, this kind of makes things easier if, if you, know, you go back to 525 and you look at the USB multipass segment. I'm talking about extracting ISOs and putting boot folders and, and all these different you know, uh, files throughout your file system and trying to get everything to work and you know, praying to the etherlords. And I think that this would actually make things a lot easier. Um, there's actually a way to do this with what's called legacy grub or grub1, and that's using the map command. And uh, basically, that just allows you to do like similar with the, uh, the loopback option in grub2. Um, I'm not sure how reliable it is. Uh, I do need to note that if you are going to try to, to uh, load a ISO file with the map command, uh, if you use tac tac mem, it actually like dumps the file to memory, and you don't need to worry about the ISO being contiguous. If it's not there, I can link you to some uh, programs that you can actually check the, would it be continuity? No, continuousness, whatever. Anyway, <laughs> check to make sure that the ISO is um, not fragmented, essentially. Um, now, Grub2 is not in mainstream adoption. You'll uh, actually not see it in you know, your most mainstream Linux distro, Ubuntu, at least that in my mind it is, uh, until 9.10. So that's forthcoming. I'm actually uh, about to start checking out those daily builds. Uh, but for right now, on 9.04 and like below, and I'm just going to use that as my base example. Um, Grub1 is is what's going on now. If you're you know a new Ubuntu guy like myself and you want to get on the new Grub, uh, there's it's, it's really simple. It's just an app get install Grub2, and then you reboot, and you get this beautiful new option in Grub called chain load. And what that does is from Grub1, it chain loads Grub2, that then loads your operating system. And if that works, it's as simple as running upgrade from Grub legacy the command, and then you're all set. <laughs> Unless, of course, you're lazy and stupid like myself, and you used Wubi to do your installation rather than actually just plugging, you know, booting off the, uh, um, the Ubuntu CD and choosing install. Um, because what happens is when you use Wubi, you're actually loading uh, the file system from NTFS, and that's the thing that, um, that Grub2 does not support is NTFS. So, you might have some problems there. Anyway, so I've got to rebuild my system. But, um, but until then, I can actually let you know, if you have Grub2 loaded on your system, this is how you would uh, set up a USB device to actually boot from it, and then uh, the, you know, have the commands to actually load a ISO. Uh, basically, you want to set up the file system like VAT. So it'd be um, mkfs, make file system .vat, uh, tack n, and then you give it a volume name, and then whatever your device is. So if it's like slash dev, slash sdb, 
um, or whatever your device may be. Run mount, figure that out. Um, then you would mount that, so you know, mount slash dev slash sdb1 to you know, a place like slash mount, and then do your grub install, but you want to use the tac tac no tac floppy option there, and then set the root directory over to uh, slash mount where, wherever you've mounted it, and then give it the device, and what happens is it installs grub to your USB device, you know, rather than your hard drive or anything like that, which is kind of cool. Uh, if you want to actually play with Grub and you don't, or if you want to play with the new version of Grub, but you don't want to install it on your system, I recommend checking out the all-in-one boot floppy. This is pretty cool. Check this out. I think I've got it on my desktop here. And yes, I do. Okay, so actually I'm going to use QEMU here, which Paul is quite fond of, with tech FDA to all-in-one.image. And I'm just booting up here into... The all-in-one boot floppy, woohoo! And I can actually take a look at Grub2. And now I'm in you know, the Grub2 command line here, and I can do all sorts of fun stuff. And I don't need to worry about borking anything because I'm in an emulator, and that's all good. Now, um, I did want to mention a few other things uh, about the current version, if you will, of the multipass. But beforehand, uh, let me mention this really nifty utility. Like I was talking about, eventually there would be like a GUI to make this so simple. Um, and there actually is. And this was sent to me by Sir Pugna, I think. And I am, I'll show it to you now, and you're going to see the problem here. Or at least some of you will. Some of you are going to say, well, what? You don't, you don't know the language? So here it is. This is multi-boot at mod custom. And unfortunately, it's all in French. Uh, Google helped me translate the website enough to actually get it installed. And here it is, and I don't speak a lick of French. So um, I, from what I understand, you can actually use this tool to specify your different ISOs. It actually has some stuff built in to load up some different operating systems, kind of like, um, kind of like uh, UNet Booten would, like download your ISOs. And then it makes your USB key, and I believe the way that it goes about it is it actually creates partitions and then loads them from there with Grub. Um, but I don't know any French, so if you do and you're an expert on this stuff, hit me up because this seems really cool, but I can't figure it out. So anyway, so if we take a look at my menu.lsc file down at the bottom here, I've actually found some awesome code from the forums, and this one in particular I thought was worth highlighting because this is actually how to load uh, like Ubuntu 9.04 in persistent mode. And I think that's very cool because there's nothing more annoying, especially in like something like Backtrack or whatnot, to you know, boot up into your environment, make some changes, you know, configure it to your liking, and then you reboot and everything's changed. Also, I want to show you what's going on here with notes. And I think it would be easiest if we just rebooted right off of my key and then actually show you what's going on here. So here we are booted into Grub for DOS, your USB multipass legacy, if you will. And some things I wanted to point out here. Notes. This is pretty cool. I'm actually loading another menu.lst file where I can actually add important things here like CDs, serials, IPs, stuff like that. And you know, important information. And I can have a different background for all of these. So I can actually start nesting menus and doing some nifty things with that. Also, the Ubuntu up in here, the Ubuntu Live CD, this is the one if I take a look here, it's actually using the persistent. And I think it's all in this one right here where you actually get to see the persistent. Hooray! So let's go ahead and boot that with B. And that didn't work because I have to add tac tac mem. And now it should boot. That's the nice thing about Grub is you can actually, you don't have to now if, you, if you messed up your menu.lst, at least in Grub Legacy, you can hit E and then edit the entry and then hit B to boot it. So this takes forever to boot into. It does work. It is persistent. Uh, the reason being is that tac tac mem, it actually copies it to memory. It's kind of a big ISO. Uh, on your smaller ISOs, it doesn't take that long at all. So anyway, those are some of the cool things that I've been seeing, uh, some developments with the USB multipass. Hit me up at darrenathack5.org with what you guys would like to see with this. Or if you have some nifty tweaks that, uh, that you've done with yours, hit me up. I'd love to see those. There's uh, a thriving community all around this project right now. So find that at hack5.org 
slash forms. Now, a little bit later in the show, uh, Matt is going to be talking to us about Kodiak, an Adobe Air application to manage our virtual machines. But first, let's head over to Shannon and find out what's happening in the community. Hey guys, I just wanted to thank you for coming out to the Hack5 Bush Gardens meetup. I know I had an awesome time. I think everybody else had a fantastic time. Tons of roller coasters, pictures, and videos. And we have the Battering Ram Trust Your Technolus video for you. Make sure to check out all of the other really cool pictures and videos from the Hack5 meetup over at hack5.org slash forums. And if you have any nominations for the Community Spotlight next week, make sure to email us anything cool. And we would like to thank our sponsor, the National Fight Against Drunk Driving. Listen people, alcohol, drugs, and driving do not mix. And the message is pretty clear. Drinking and driving, over the limit, under arrest. Don't put yourself or others in danger. Police will be out in force from August 21st through Labor Day weekend cracking down on drunk drivers. Beyond just putting your life or mine at risk, you could cost yourself a bundle of time and money. Loss of driver's license, higher insurance rates, and dozens of other expenses from attorney's fees, fines, costs of towing, repairs, loss of work, the list goes on and on. Drinking and driving is so easy to avoid. Go out, have fun, just plan ahead. Get a designated driver, call a taxi, take the bus, or rent a limo. They're actually pretty cheap when you split it up between half a dozen people. So following up on the ESXi series that I, uh, I think I accomplished uh, the goal that I set out to, um, got a couple emails inquiring about ways to manage the ESXi servers or your ESX or your virtual center servers outside of Windows. Now there really isn't a, a really good way to do that yet. Um, there's a gentleman, uh, his name escapes me, uh, but uh, it's by Blue Bear Software and the application is called Kodiak. Uh, and basically it's cross-platform due to the fact that it's an Adobe Air application. So you've probably got Air installed if you're using TweetDeck or the HackHouse um, application that you can use to watch on your desktop. This uses Adobe Air and while it's in very private beta right now, I have a copy that I'm going to show you right now. So what we're going to do is we're just going to launch Kodiak. <laughs> Kodiak's up here and running, and we're going to type in our server IP, which is 10.10.1.182. Uh, the username is root, and the password, of course. Now, right now, VMware is the only module that is currently in production or being developed. However, uh, as there are different... Uh, virtualization technologies and platforms, so on and so forth, Kodiak will support Zen as well as the Microsoft uh, Hyper-V uh, management as well. Uh, so right now it's processing the inventory. Once that's done, it's going to show us kind of an interesting uh, view of our topography of our virtual system, which is installed on the server that we're connecting to. All right, and here is the topography that I was talking to you about. Uh, it's kind of a spider-ish uh, looking graph of uh, hosts and clusters, and uh, there's some information that really kind of struck me the first time that I actually saw it, and it's a very interesting way uh, to look at everything uh, aside from just a single virtual machine here and there. Uh, here we could see uh, this Apollo Bez server, uh, which is no longer in production, is actually using a whole crap load of the system memory uh, and very little of the uh, selected uh, CPU usage. <clears throat> the nice thing about this application is we can actually go and change it from spring mode to basic mode and we're going to go ahead and just start dragging things around so I can make things a whole lot easier for myself to read uh, so I've got external IPs, my DMZ, my internal uh, things of that nature. So going forward we can now click on my Apollo Bez server and we can actually open the console right from here. Now remember this is all done completely in air um, which is when you think about uh, it, it's basically using scriptlets uh, 
to connect and manage the different services that you're going to be performing. Uh, so here we've got our local console session. Um, and while the performance isn't native to what you'd be running on Windows, it is good enough to get the job done. Uh, so we can see down here, uh, looks like I haven't updated my BES server in a while, which is probably a bad thing. So we're going to double click on that. Express install is fine. Click install. And this is actually running in a live environment in my office on the other side of town. Uh, so here we go, it's initializing the installation, and once that's done, it's going to reboot, so we're good to get out of here. Now the actions that you can do, like I said, are scriptlets. The nice thing about this is there's a single button to reboot to the BIOS if you ever need to, uh, you know, manage the, God, what have you, uh, different uh, CD or, you know, boot from uh, something else. Reboot the guest, power on, power off. Take a screenshot is actually really nice, because instead of taking a screenshot of the entire desktop, it has now taken a screenshot of just that window. So if you're looking for more information, I highly suggest you go check out Kodiak by Blue Bear Software. The link is right here. Uh, for more information, hit up the forums at forums.hack5.org or email me directly, matt at hack5.org. All right, so we're going to get the rest of the crew back in here to wrap this bitch up. But first, we're going to check in with Darren and see what's going on with the contest. This month's contest is one for the Photoshop and After Effects crowd. We encourage you to get creative with the assets over at hack5.org slash LCD wall to put together a sweet little graphic loop for our LCD wall. And the winner will receive Prono Bozo's album Zero Equals One Equals Everything along with some sweet Hack 5 swag. Plus, their graphic loop will be featured on upcoming episodes of Hack 5. How sweet, right? So find all the details for this contest over at hack5.org slash LCD wall and be sure to get your submissions in by September 3rd. I believe that's a Thursday. We'd also like to thank our sponsor, GoDaddy. Keep your personal information away from spammers, hackers, and your crazy ex-roommate. Private domain registration from GoDaddy.com protects your privacy by keeping your address, phone number, and more out of the public database. Check out revision3.com slash GoDaddy for all of our GoDaddy codes and offers. Here we go. Here we go. Matt, next week, Shannon's going to be back on the show with a soldering iron, dismantling her uh, Kindle there, turning it what? into a PCIe modem. MPCI. Huh? No. A laptop no. modem? No. Yeah. No. Is that what you're doing? No. You said you were doing Kindle hacks. I'm assuming this you're turning it into an EVD. Hardware no. for free. No. Can we put, like, LEDs on it? Dude, you buy the thing for $300. You get on the internet forever. You have to mod it. Seriously, no. if I was homeless, that would be the only device I want, I'd need. No. I want, like, blue and red activity LEDs so I can no. see when I'm talking on WhisperNet. No, you TV. cannot do this. You cannot. No. All I'm right. doing Kindle hacks, yes, but you are not putting LEDs in this. Is there a USB thing on that guy? Uh, I wonder if we could get console access. No! All right, what anyway. hacks are you doing what if we're not doing hardware seriously. hacks? I'm going to show you how to use Google Maps and find your email and put your own pictures on the thing. and Text messaging? Text messaging. Well, that's probably all a sorts of things that you're not we supposed to do. I don't know. If somebody knows how to turn it into a USB modem for life, I should hit you with this. Although my GPS has a U uh, modem in it, and it's got That's a USB port. What I'm saying is, I want to find some way to hack into the WhisperNet. That's what it what's is. Is WhisperNet about. 3G? No, I think it's. But here's the thing: I just want to get SSH, get a little IRC action. You know, important oh, stuff. Oh, I think on you can do that too. IRC. Sweet. I'll figure it out. Cool. <laughs> so we're gonna. Anyway, you. that's what I'm doing next week. Nice. <laughs> email right. snubs. If you've got some. <gasps> stuff. Yeah, if you've got ideas, email. Yes. Her. Whatever. Uh, Want to let you guys know that the store is open and pineapples are in stock. Yay. Uh, monkeys are on their way, so head on over to hack5.org/slash. It's store. Hack store shop. shop. Hack shop. They don't get you this. Yeah, there you go. We've said so many different <laughs> incarnations. It's at this time. I love when Matt says something on the show and then I'm in editing and I'm like, oh, I have to make the URL. <laughs> Speaking oh, of which, you still okay. gotta make the. Uh, no, I don't. No, I don't. It's done. It's done. By the time you say it, it's done, the, I don't even the know what it is. Email address? Yeah, yeah. It's, oh, that one's done too. Oh, okay. <laughs> if you guys are doing the Twitter thing, follow us. Uh, at Hack5 on Twitter is where you can find the rest of us. And if you're into Facebook, we have a cool thing going on there at facebook.com slash technolust. 
trust your techno lust. That was a lot of What are we in? <laughs> can medieval times? <laughs>